We all know and understand the problems associated with smoke inhalation. But what about surgical smoke? Stay tuned. Surgical smoke, or plume, can be a pretty dangerous byproduct of energy device usage in the OR day in and day out. Uh, some examples could be monopolar, bipolar, and, and lasers. There's a multitude of other energy devices that we use in the OR that produce this plume, this surgical smoke. The most common one will probably be the Bovi. Uh, it's just monopolar cauterization. We use it day in and day out pretty much on every single case that enters an operating room. And I'd have to say the monopolar cautery and laser usage probably produce the most amount of smoke in the operating room. Now during surgery, plume can be pretty annoying, uh, not only to the surgeons, but the assistants and the techs, residents, anybody that's really standing up at the field. Um, the odor can be pretty bad at times, uh, but even more so than that, it can be pretty obstructing uh, as far as viewing the tissue that you're actually working on. To be more specific, like lap coles, um, many surgeons that I've worked with in the past have used like a spatula monopolar cautery when taking down the gallbladder. And a lot of these surgeons are just so fast. I mean, some of these cases only take like 20 minutes, but you know, they have a grasper in there, they're holding the gallbladder and they're just monopolar bovi all the way up the back side of that gallbladder taking it off the liver and they're doing it so fast that there's just the whole abdomen is like full of smoke and it's like you can barely see what you're doing I don't know how they do it sometimes but it's important to have some things in place uh, especially on laparoscopic cases to evacuate that smoke in, in a quick fashion so that they are able to keep a good visualization of the tissue they're working on. So who's at risk? Obviously everybody that's standing at the field. You and I are standing at the field, a surgeon, a resident, a nurse, whoever is standing at the field right there in the middle of surgery is at potential risk of inhaling you know, these vapors, this plume. Um, it's been shown that plume can contain toxic gases, vapors, viruses, bacteria. Um, probably an example of one of the most important cases for you to wear proper attire would be uh, like an HPV patient and you're burning off like genital warts or something like that. It can be used with either monopolar or lasers, but the smoke produced from burning off those those genital warts could transmit to other people in the room if you're not using the proper smoke evacuation and if you're not using the proper mask and attire for the case. So how do we prevent these hazards? Because these hazards are easily preventable. Number one, use your suction. Every case that you're going to be working in or that you are working in has use of suction on the table. It's usually just a suction tubing and a yank hour tip or whatever type of suction tip you're using. If the surgeon is working and burning through tissue, you have that suction nearby that incision just sucking up that extra tissue smoke, that plume, so nobody at the table has to breathe in all of that vapor. Number two would be use a smoke evacuator. On those specific cases like HPV patients where you're burning off some genital warts and stuff like that, we have specific smoke evacuation machines and some suction machines actually have smoke evacuation uh, settings to them, but you can use that to, to help even more with getting that smoke out of the field and not in anybody's faces. Number three, make sure your hospital has some sort of hazard markings that they utilize on their surgical schedules. Just so the people that are working in that room know and understand that there is a hazard that is associated with this patient that they will be working on. Number four, if you are in a hazardous case, use an N95 respirator mask. Everyone calls them TB masks, tuberculosis masks, but 
They're not only just used for TB patients. Use them on those HPV patients if you're going to be doing a wart removal. Put that mask on. I know it's hard to breathe through those mask and it, masks and it's a pain in the butt, but you are preventing yourself from a potential hazard. You're doing it for yourself. Now all that being said, I know tissue smoke and surgical smoke is nowhere near as harmful as like cigarette smoke. Um, it's like 95 or 96 percent water so you know surgical smoke is essentially like a vapor because you know our bodies are made up of, of that much water so just cutting through tissue you're basically cutting through water mostly um, but I just want people to recognize the hazards the potential hazards that could happen in the OR depending on the cases that you see so I hope you guys liked the video if you did please give it a share and a like and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.